We will destroy F-16s just as we destroy today's tanks, armoured vehicles and other equipment. Russian President Vladimir Putin has slammed claims that Russia is planning to fight against Europe as utter nonsense. As for the allegations that we are planning to invade Europe after Ukraine, this is utter nonsense meant solely to intimidate their population to make them pay more money, he said at a meeting with military pilots in the Tver region. He noted that this narrative unfolds amid the slumping economy and deteriorating living standards. This is absolutely clear and is acknowledged by everyone. This is not propaganda. This is what is really happening. They need to justify themselves, so they are intimidating their population with a potential Russian threat while seeking to expand their dictation onto the entire world. Putin stressed, Putin has termed as nonsense the idea of Russia starting a conflict with NATO countries. Putin added that there was an environment of fear created by Western countries about a Russian threat to countries like Poland, the Czech Republic or the Baltic states as a tactic to justify defence spending. Putin, during the course of his speech, accused NATO of moving closer to Russian borders and not the other way around. His comments came at a time when tensions between both the sides have increased drastically. They came right up to our borders. Did we go across the ocean to the borders of the United States? No, they are approaching us and they have come very close, Putin added. Meanwhile, Putin has said that if Western countries supply Ukraine with F-16 fighters, the aircraft will not alter the situation on the battlefield. If they supply F-16s and they are talking about this and are apparently training pilots, this will not change the situation on the battlefield. And we will destroy the aircraft just as we destroy today's tanks, armoured vehicles and other equipment, including multiple rocket launchers, Putin said. Putin's remarks came after Ukrainian Foreign Minister Dmitry Kuleba said that the aircraft should arrive in Ukraine in the coming months. Kiev has been asking for F-16s. Countries like Belgium, Denmark, Norway and the Netherlands have pledged to donate F-16s, while other countries have said that they would train Ukrainian pilots in their use. French Defense Minister Sebastian Lecorneau has announced that Paris will soon be able to supply Kiev with 78 Caesar self-propelled howitzers and will increase supplies of shells to meet Ukraine's urgent ammunition needs. ATA press conference, Lecorneau said that France, Ukraine and Denmark had reached an agreement to finance the delivery of Caesar 155mm self-propelled howitzers, which would allow Paris to deliver them quickly. He added that France also aimed to supply Ukraine with 80,000 rounds of ammunition for 155mm guns this year, compared to the 30,000 it has provided since the start of the full-scale invasion. In addition, Lecorno noted that France was involved in the search for existing stocks of gunpowder and ammunition that could be purchased from countries outside the EU as part of Czechia's initiative under the plan. The Czechs seek to obtain 800,000 artillery shells for Ukraine. Czech leaders previously said the first shell should be delivered to Ukraine no later than June. At least 18 countries have joined the initiative, according to officials in Prague.at at the same time, Lecorno said that European countries should reduce their dependence on the United States to ensure security on the continent. This is an absolute necessity. I think it's wrong that American taxpayers should pay so much for the security of Europeans, he said. At least 12 Palestinians drowned and six others were trampled to death when people rushed to collect airdropped American aid packages off the northern Gaza coast, local authorities said that the Pentagon confirmed that three of the 18 packages it airdropped on Monday had parachute malfunctions and fell into the water just off the coast of the Strip. Abu Muhammad, who witnessed the incident, told CNN the aid was dropped far from the coast into the sea, after which multiple men who don't know how to swim drowned while trying to retrieve it. Footage of the incident showed people running towards the site of the airdrop as parcels descended upon a beach in Bait Lahia in North Gaza, with some falling onto the shore and others into the SEA. U.S. State Department spokesman Matthew Miller laments reports that several Palestinians drowned while trying to retrieve airdropped aid that landed off the coast of northern Gaza. It is a tragedy, Miller says when asked about the reports in a briefing. It is not just a tragedy that these individuals died trying to get aid. It is a tragedy that they felt so desperate that they had to swim out into the ocean to try and retrieve it in the first place. No one should have to put themselves at risk to try and get food, water and medicine for their families. It should just be there for them, and that is what we're trying to accomplish through the work that we're doing to provide humanitarian assistance and in our engagements with the government of Israel to facilitate the delivery of additional humanitarian assistance, 
The State Department spokesman says aid agencies say only about a fifth of required supplies are entering Gaza as Israel persists with an air and ground offensive, triggered by Hamas' October 7 attack, that has shattered the enclave, pushing parts of it into famine already. They say deliveries by air or sea directly onto Hamas-run Gaza's beaches are no substitute for increased supplies coming in by land via Israel or Egypt.